Welcome to another edition of GamePro TV. Today we'll take you to Las Vegas to see what's new at the Winter Consumer Electronics Show. We'll show you the latest interactive project from Steven Spielberg's DreamWorks Company and show you the intense competition that took place in New Orleans before the Super Bowl. That's all coming up. But first, rules and regulations. This is how our review system works. Each game that we review is judged and rated in four categories. Graphics, in which we focus on the look and feel of the game. Control, in which we tell you how easy or how difficult it is to perform the game character's actions. Sound, in which we tell you if the audio action keeps up with the visual. And Fun Factor, where we sum up the entire game and tell you, quite frankly, if it's enjoyable or not. Each category of the game receives a rating that can go from 1.0 to 5.0, one being absolutely horrible and five being absolutely awesome. The actual ratings will appear at the end of the review, where we'll sum up the whole thing. So now let's take a look at Square's latest game, Tobal Number 1, for the Sony PlayStation. Squaresoft is a company that is legendary for its incredibly in-depth role-playing games. But with their latest title, Tobal Number 1, they're making their first leap into the competitive genre of fighting games. In Tobal, as in all fighting games, the competitors are thrown into a tournament-type situation where the winner takes home the top prize, which in this case happens to be the rights to mine the planet of Tobol for a priceless and rare fuel. Eight fighters are playable, each one sporting some of the best animation seen in any fighting game to date. The developers at Square opted not to texture map the characters, and instead utilized the PlayStation's high resolution mode, giving the game a crisp and unique look. They also managed to get the animation to clock in at an incredible 60 frames per second, double the speed of most of the other fighting games on the market. As a result, the action is faster and more intense than most gamers may be used to. And if those features weren't enough to wow you, Square also added what they call the Quest Mode, where you can take your favorite character through a third-person corridor adventure full of traps and obstacles. Along the way, you'll encounter weird creatures just waiting for their opportunity to be humbled by you. Square enlisted the expertise of Siachi Ishii to head up the development of this game. Ishii's resume includes work on Virtua Fighter and Tekken, two of the best fighting games ever made. And it doesn't take long for you to see the resemblance to both titles in Tobol. The motion-captured animation is smooth and realistic, and the player control is extremely responsive. Without a doubt, borrowing from either Virtua or Tekken would probably be a good idea. But unfortunately, Tobol falls just short of capturing the magic of either of those titles for a few reasons. First, the fighting styles between the competitors are too similar to one another. Some may be quicker or stronger than others, but everyone's style is pretty much the same. Second, though the quest mode is a unique addition to the game, some may find it tedious and uninteresting. While stumbling through these never-ending corridors, you may begin to wonder if the disc space could have been used to add a few more characters to the game like Tekken 2, or more depth to the few that are present to rival Virtua Fighter. Overall, Square's first volley into the fighting arena is entertaining, but not quite up to par with the big boys. But if the game's shortcomings are addressed for the sequel, those big boys may have something to worry about. All right, the CES convention welcomes GamePro TV to Las Vegas. Thank you very much. Here at the annual Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, all the top companies were on hand to showcase their wear. You could find everything from vibrating recliners, the latest sound systems, celebrities, models, games of chance, and of course, video games. I think gaming is going to become more interactive, more of an immersive kind of environment. I think one thing that you're going to see with joysticks and particular game controllers is what's called force feedback, which gives you a tactile response. If you're shooting a gun, you get a recoil. If you hit a wall with a driving wheel, you you get a bump. I think there's going to be more more interactivity that way, more feedback from the game itself to make it more realistic, to make the game more fun. While most of the top game companies are waiting to unveil their new products at E3 this summer in Atlanta, there were still some cool items worth a look. I definitely like the new controller with the N64. It lets you do a lot more stuff that you wouldn't be able to do regularly with other game systems like the PlayStation or Nintendo 16 even. In years past where video game companies dominated the show, 
PC and interactive computer game for the hot topic. PCs are getting closer to your arcade quality of graphic. You still don't have it, but you're getting closer. But you've also got capabilities with the standard PC that you don't have with a gaming machine. You've got you know, learning capabilities, you've got the interactive capabilities, obviously you've got the communications capabilities, um, work at home, all of that is available okay. on the PC. So we're very happy about that. Well, I think the, the biggest reason somebody would want to play an internet game is that uh, it gets pretty boring just playing against a computer. A computer only has so many different combinations that it can throw at you. And uh, a human is obviously the best component. So with internet gaming, you get the, uh, the ability to interact with someone else and compete against them. It actually extends the gaming experience and makes it a lot more fun and a lot more realistic. Sega Club is a receiver that we're using that lets people know when they're looking at satellite receivers, they see the name Sega, they recognize the name, it's marketing. It has nothing to do with the video games other than the name. The Consumer Electronics Show may no longer be the ultimate video game convention, but still offers some new ideas to video gamers. Game Pro TV will be right back. If you love video games, you need Game Pro Magazine. Each monthly issue is packed full of tips and tactics, reviews, previews, secret codes, hot news, passwords, game-winning strategy guides, advanced game systems, home PC games, plus regular features on sports, role-playing, and fighting games. Call Game Pro's Hot Tips Hotline at 1-900-860-TIPS. Visit Game Pro on the World Wide Web or America Online at keyword Game Pro. Game Pro, the number one multi-platform gaming magazine. Pick one up wherever magazines are sold. To stop drug use, uh, I think it's going to take more than a just say no campaign. It's so, it's so easy to tell somebody just say no, but you've got to give them the power to say no. You have to decide whether to compromise yourself or not. You have to decide whether you're going to help people or whether you're going to hurt people. You have to decide uh, you know, what's important to you. Where are your priorities? I'm no stronger than the next guy. I've got to be able to make wise decisions in my own life and know that that's what I want to do. Las Vegas, the city of lights, the gaming capital of the world. Where these gamers gamble away millions of dollars for a chance to earn big bucks. These gamers pour their money into some of the hottest arcades in the country, where simply big smiles are the payoff. Hey, welcome to Game Pro TV, the Coney Island Emporium. At the newly opened New York, New York Hotel and Casino, the Coney Island Emporium, currently the largest arcade facility in Las Vegas, combines the feel and sounds of a traditional carnival, along with some of the latest virtual reality and arcade games found anywhere today. There's so many people in here that the, that the customers get spread out over, it's over uh, 500 feet long, okay, and there's a roller coaster down at the other end. So people tend to travel and walk right through the whole thing, walk up and down the facility, and they play everything. So the distribution of money here is across the board, covers all of it. This is a vacation land. It's middle America. They'll come here because there's so much excitement, and it's 24 hours a day. There are no clocks. When you're on vacation, it doesn't matter, because when you go home, you'll rest. Here you do, you have fun. Just down the street, the fabulous Luxor Hotel is home to one of the largest virtual reality centers in the world, Sega Virtual Land. We have over 220 games, I believe, now we're up to. Uh, like you see, we have the Indy 500, and we have other simulator rides. We have virtual reality. Uh, we have Virtual Fighter 3s, the latest games that are in right now. Um, we have Redemption for smaller children. Um, and we have just about everything old and new right now. Gamers can be totally immersed in a true interactive environment, from a high-speed orbiting F-14 flight simulator to battling up to four opponents in a high-impact tank command game, where the player feels every shot and hit of his or her tank. The Indy 500 ride is an eight-player simulator. Uh, it's three dollars per person to ride. Uh, we, they race against each other. It is run on hydraulics. The cars move. Uh, they crash. They tumble over. It's a lot of fun. It's completely interactive, and most people that come off uh, love it. Congratulations, there, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for racing on Indy 500. It's great, real fun. Uh, recommend it to anybody. Well, one of our signature mottos right now in our corporation is get out of the house. That's the new Sega Gameworks motto. And uh, that's what we would like to see people get out of the house, get out with their family, friends, boyfriends, girlfriends, come on out, try video games, uh, and just have the whole game room experience with the new technology that's out. 
Next month, Sega will continue to lead the arcade industry with the openings of GameWorks in Seattle, a 30,000 square foot arcade mecca. Spearheaded by Steven Spielberg, GameWorks will combine the hottest virtual reality games in the world with elements of the classic arcade. In May of 97, a sprawling 50,000 square foot facility will open right here in Las Vegas. GameWorks represents a revolutionary approach to the way people play and interact. Gamers, families, and friends will become totally immersed in another world of fun and adventure. Sega may be battling it out on the home video market, but they are definitely on the cutting edge of the arcade industry. Now we go from Steven Spielberg's company to George Lucas's and their latest video game contributions to the Star Wars saga. First, Dark Forces. Dark Forces enjoyed modest success on the PC and is now available for the Sony PlayStation. This Doom-style shooter puts you inside the Imperial headquarters on a mission to steal the plans for the creation of the Death Star. Of course, Darth Vader's stormtroopers aren't happy about the idea, so they gang up on you to destroy you, which in the video game world is where the fun should start. But Dark Forces doesn't quite get the job done. This game suffers from average to below average graphics and animation, especially in the close-ups where the pixelation problems are horribly apparent. Also, Dark Forces fails to come up with enough unique features to separate it from all the other Doom clones out on the market. If you're a fan of the Star Wars series, then Dark Forces is probably a must-have, regardless of its shortcomings. But if your goal is to find a good first-person shooter, you may want to look elsewhere, quite possibly in the direction of Disruptor by Universal Interactive. You're not authorized in this area. LucasArts continues the Star Wars legacy with Shadows of the Empire for the Nintendo 64. Your adventure begins on the frozen tundra of the ice planet Hoth. Your mission is to knock out all the Imperial walkers by piloting a high-flying snow speeder and blasting away at will. After disposing of the AT-ATs, your next mission is to infiltrate the Empire's strongholds by eliminating stormtroopers and other sinister creatures that get in your way. As in all levels of shadows, you're able to change camera angles and point of view shots, similar to that of Dark Forces. After infiltrating the Empire's headquarters, take flight in Dash's version of the Millennium Falcon, the Outrider. The power of the Nintendo 64 can truly be seen in these battles against TIE Fighters, as you soar freely through space, taking out your opponents at will. Overall, the graphics are amazing, the control is seamless, whether it be shooting, running, or flying. And just like in the movie, John Williams' fully orchestrated soundtrack guides the player through his own battle against the Empire. If you're a fan of Star Wars, Shadows of the Empire is a must for your collection. And may the Force be with you. Well, let's stick with science fiction and give you our review of ASC Games' Perfect Weapon. What do you get when you combine the puzzle and problem-solving aspects of Tomb Raider with the quick, frantic fighting action of Tekken 2? Well, ASC Games hopes you get Perfect Weapon. In Perfect Weapon, Blake Hunter, Navy SEAL and champion martial artist, finds himself teleported to another dimension where he is on his own and under constant attack. The fighting scenes in this game are what really sets it apart. Instead of a lot of one-on-one -on -one fighting, the developers opted to put you in the middle of an alien barroom brawl, taking on three to four bad guys at once. This adds to the depth of the fighting because your opponents gang up on you and you have to protect your back and sides as well as fend off the guy right in front of you. But don't worry, you are heralded in by the World Martial Arts Championship from the corner store. He's come equipped with over 100 moves and knows how to use them. The moves are also relatively easy to perform, if you're familiar with Tekken's fighting engine. Perfect Weapon isn't all fighting though. The puzzle aspects of the game are just as important. The control in this game may take a little getting used to, especially when you jump from the search and discover modes into the fighting for dear life modes, but those situations will become easier to handle with experience. Perfect Weapon has an imaginative concept and great artwork. And since this is really the first game of its kind, there's no genre comparison. But the idea of combining problem solving and adventure games with fighters is long overdue. Maybe Perfect Weapon will help usher in a whole new genre of gaming. Stay with us when we come back. We'll give you your first look at Square's Final Fantasy VII. And we'll take you to New Orleans for Madden Bowl 97. Hey, what's up? I'm Bill Bellamy, Game Pro TV. will be back in two minutes. Two. Yeah, I want two minutes. All right, man. This isn't just a gym. Look at what it does. It changes lives. It makes thousands confident. 
accept it. This isn't just a coach. This coach helps build muscles, strength, endurance, self-esteem. This isn't just a ball. It improves concentration, focus, motivation, teamwork. This isn't just a sport. It's the way we train for life. When I was young, I discovered music and practiced to become a musician. Later, I joined the Navy and became an officer and learned about discipline and teamwork and doing your best. Then playing pro ball, the dream of a lifetime. These are the things I love. These are my choices. But none of them would have come true. I hadn't made an important decision a long time ago. I don't do drugs. That's what's worked for me. Think about it. Set him up and hit the lanes. Every night can be your bowling night with 10 Pin Alley by ASC. 10 Pin Alley is a great game with excellent graphics and unbelievable sounds of a true bowling experience. As a player, you have the choice of a variety of bowlers, from a 300-pound behemoth to an 8-year-old. Players can change clothes, skin color, hair, bowling ball, weight, lane conditions, type of ball, and skill level. <laughs> You also have the choice of three bowling centers, from your local bowling alley to the hip groove of Maui Bowl to the neon flux world of the Midnight Congo Bowl. Players can either play open style, one-on-one, -on -one, team, or compete against a slew of bowlers for a chance to earn big bucks on the TPA tournament. Similar to that of golf video games, 10 Pinelli relies on a power and release meter to determine the flight of the ball. The green arrow also designates the amount of spin placed on each throw. An arrow at the top of the lane indicates where the bowler should line up before each toss. Getting used to the control can be very frustrating, and you'll be throwing a lot of gutter balls the first time out, or even worse, knocking yourself out. Plus, the game also offers a glimpse of the Bowling Hall of Fame, which should be of interest to bowling fans of all ages. If you're into bowling, or even if you're not, 10 Pin Alley by ASC is a great game to just have fun. It strikes out every time. GamePro TV traveled down to New Orleans recently to be part of one of the biggest get-togethers of the year, Madden Bowl 97. Football and entertainment's hotshots venture down to the Big Easy for one main purpose, to be crowned champion of Madden football for 1997. It's great to have all you people here and, and be part of this. And uh, I wish you all the best. Thanks for coming. We had the competition going on tour with, you know, everyone on tour, and uh, it got pretty brutal. So we came in here and figured, oh, man, you know, these football guys can't hang with us, and I'm ready. One timeout, 29 seconds left in the game. Oh, come on, guys. And I think I'm unstoppable in Madden 97. I mean, that's, that's all, it's all good. We had a tournament up at the Jets, and I was the best up there. I was the best in Dallas when I came down to Dallas, so I think I'm going to be the best here. Well, I was just talking to William Floyd. He said he was. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm not going to argue with him. A guy comes up and, and he says, he tells me, he says, hey, I'm going to win this thing. I say, okay, you're going to win. So I'll, I'll go along. I'm not going to argue with him. The Bears offense isn't that good. Uh-uh, we're not going for it. We're not going for it. In spite of all the happy faces, it didn't take long before the action started to get hot and hectic and for the winners to start separating themselves from the losers. They cheated me. I'm not upset. One of the toughest battles was between Jimmy Spencer of the Cincinnati Bengals and Darius Rucker of Pootie and the Blowfish. With less than 30 seconds to go in the game, Rucker throws a long pass in a late attempt to tie the game, but after two unsuccessful attempts to punch it in, the outcome of the game rested on this fourth and 14th prayer. Let's play the game, Scott. 
That's it! I cannot believe I lost. I just I can't believe I lost. You would have turned my favorite. I know. I can't believe I lost. Defense win the games, you know, and that's defense won the game. That's how I've been winning all the games with defense. So the championship boiled down to a match between Jimmy Spencer and Kajana Carner. With time winding down in the game and Kajana's Bengals leading by six points, Jimmy Spencer's Colts try to run the ball in. With the extra point, Spencer and the Colts take a one-point lead. But Kajana showed the entire tournament that his offense is explosive. All he needs is a field goal. So that's a good bit, man. I'm going to be champion. Oh, it feels great. It feels great. I think I'm going to ride and um, I might take my trophy with me to Europe. Now let's take a look at a few games that will be out soon. Cygnosis' latest game, The City of Lost Children, is based on the surreal movie of the same title by filmmakers Jean-Pierre Junet and Marc Carl. The game follows the adventures of an orphan girl in her attempt to save a young boy's dreams from the evil intentions of a mad scientist. The movie was stylishly photographed by cinematographer Darius Hunji, and the game developer's goal was to capture the same look and feel as well. The City of Lost Children will hit stores later this month. Final Fantasy VII, the latest in the highly acclaimed Final Fantasy series, will leap into next generation gaming for the first time via the Sony PlayStation. Over 100 designers have been hard at work at Square's Tokyo offices to complete the latest installment in this role-playing classic. The company spent over $3 million already in development, and from the looks of it, it's been well worth it. Square wanted FF7 to play like a game, but feel like a movie. The transitions between pre-rendered scenes and gameplay are seamless, and the animation is completely 3D. Fans of the series are used to playing FF on a Nintendo system, and originally FF7 was to be released for the powerful Nintendo 64. But Square abandoned those plans and signed on with the PlayStation instead. Executives at the company said that the sheer size and graphic intensity of the game would have cost too much to execute on a cartridge-based system. Final Fantasy VII will instead be stuffed into two or maybe even three CDs for the Sony PlayStation. Role-playing games haven't had much success here in the States. Square hopes that this game could be the one that propels the genre into the mainstream. Final Fantasy VII will be available later this year. You're watching Game Pro TV. If you love video games, you need GamePro Magazine. Each monthly issue is packed full of tips and tactics, reviews, previews, secret codes, hot news, passwords, game-winning strategy guides, advanced game systems, home PC games, plus regular features on sports, role-playing, and fighting games. Call GamePro's Hot Tips Hotline at 1-900-860-TIPS. Visit GamePro on the World Wide Web or America Online at keyword GamePro. GamePro, the number one multi-platform gaming magazine. Pick one up wherever magazines are sold. To stop drug use, uh, I think it's going to take more than a just say no campaign. It's so, so easy to tell somebody just say no, but you've got to give them the power to say no. You have to decide whether to compromise yourself or not. You have to decide whether you're going to help people or whether you're going to hurt people. You have to decide, uh, you know, what's important to you. Where are your priorities? I'm no stronger than the next guy. I've got to be able to make wise decisions in my own life and know that that's what I want to do. This isn't just a gym. Look at what it does. It changes lives. This isn't just a coach. This coach helps build muscles, self-esteem. This isn't just a ball. It improves concentration, teamwork. This isn't just a sport. It's the way we train for life. Well, that's all the time we have for this show. Check your local listings to see when this one replays. We hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, play on.